Hello Earth Peeves, I'm Melanie Florence and this is Hot Tea for the Soul. So this is an Earth reading for people with a lot of rock star in their charts or for, oh, excuse me, burping, uh, or for those people who are looking something into their practical world, the material world. That's what this reading's about, break them up into elements, that's what I do. So I'm gonna give us a Greenwood reading which will go through our present state, our challenges, what we've got there, what we're thinking, that sort of stuff. But first, I'm gonna set us up with a few other cards from a few other decks. Afterwards, I am gonna post the uh, individual star signs in the comments, you can go to them and see what's going on for the individual star signs at the end. So I'm going to start with a bit of the archetype stick. All right. Ooh, the underworld. Ooh, the underworld. And that could be fantasy. We sort of have, you know, our underworld being our Alison underworld, I guess. And this is our deepest, darkest secret. Sometimes this is dealing with some of our deepest, darkest bits. Our underworld and our underbelly. You might find yourself being attracted to find and looking, looking and searching a little bit deeper. Uh, we know it's not all love and light. Sometimes we've got a deep, a deep, deeper. So you might be looking at some underworld vibes for you this week. Ooh, that's interesting. All right, so we've got some earth magic. Let's see some earth magic. What have we got? We've got a bit of story time from the, my, oh, Australian decks. What have we got? Oh, full moon, full moon. Completion. You might feel like you're coming to the end of a cycle, perhaps coming into the full moon. So we set our intentions with the new moon and full moon. We go through and we complete them. We throw them out into the world and the universe. So you might feel that you've been going through this deep darkness and we see here these two circles and we're going to go, maybe in the moon you might feel like a completion of this. Maybe there's a darkness that's been there and we might feel that that's over. Ooh, earth people. Might be time for lighter things to come. Let's see from the uh, Spellcasters Oracle. What have we got? Spellcasters Oracle. Commitment. All right. What have we got too? We've got our two birds here. And birds often are partners. There's a bit of tying the knot. Maybe you've been through a dark spot and there's the end of that. And we're coming to a new commitment to yourself. This may be a commitment to a partner. This looks like that we've been through a cycle. We've been through our darkness. We've completed that. And now we're ready to commit to something new. Tie the knot. Birds. Birds are often in partners. All right. So... Sadly, when you see a crow on dead on the road, quite often there's another crow that hangs around for a while on the side of the road because that's its partner. And so birds have a habit of mating for life. And so it's a really nice energy there. So we've gone through some darkness, we've gone through some completion and um, completing that cycle. And um, there's definitely a tying the knot energy inside of that. All right, so this is committing to something. I'm going to give us a couple of cards. One from the Aboriginal reading uh, deck. Reading cards. At dream time. Dream time reading cards. They are Aboriginal descendant. So here we are. This ancient DNA stuff. And this is what we want to connect to. What are the deep... What do we want for the earth people? Our rock stars. Our earthlings. One card from this beautiful deck. You know, I, I tend to be able to shuffle really well. It's one of those things from doing this over years. That you just have to wait for it to come. Oh, the carpet snake and the goanna. So this is about self-preservation and getting a bit of a thicker skin is what that is. And shedding go of self and, you know, not being offended by stuff. And we've got the carpet snake. So this is home. And this is, you know, really looking at your home, maybe with this commitment to your home and that sort of stuff. I am going to read it from the book, wherever I put the books. Where do I put the books? Up there. Give me a second. Let me read it for the book. Let's see what it's got to add. What has the book got to add for us on the carpet snake? Clips, clap sticks. Carpet snake home. All right. It teach, the carpet snake teaches you about comforts of home and the importance of having a private space. Everyone needs a safe, safe space where they can go to let go of the facades and the inhibitions and just be real. Often your home is a sacred space. You put a lot of energy into making it beautiful and comfortable. A place where you enjoy spending time, even within your home. It's important to have a space that's just yours. There will be days when the pressures of the outside world seem too much when you feel like curling up in bed. The carpet snake reminds you to have that rule. The carpet, snakes remi carpet snake reminds you that life always appears better after a long, nice sleep. 
and getting some food in your belly. Everyone needs time out occasionally. The carpet snake encourages you to curl up somewhere safe and take it easy. If you have been busy lately, the carpet snake is telling you it's time to relax and enjoy some quiet time alone in your safe space. I really love my house. It's one of those things during COVID and the lockdown, I literally was like, I, I, I've got heaps of things and I, I needed to clean carpets and I'd done um, Marie Kondo and I'd done all this stuff and it was going through and getting back to my hobbies and do, starting this and it was like creating that spot in my home. And it's really essential that you've got a spot that you can go away that isn't necessarily about your bedroom. Like get a hammock maybe, something to hang around in that you can read and have a nap in, that's what the spot is, curl up in that sun spot in the window, you know, creating a safe space that you can relax outside of it all is essential, essential in the home. All right, so we're going to have one from the uh, Australian Wildflowers, Australian Wildflower deck, that one, we're going to have that one over here, so... What have we got? The passion flower, love. All right, this came out yesterday as well, the native passion flower. Let's have a look what it says. A deeper dive into the passion flower. The fruit is edible but unpalatable. And this, along with evolving petal colours, leads us to the understanding to the key of love and passion and our ability to work and adapt and sometimes accept that change is not possible, but adaption and patience is. Love starts from within and grows out. It is time to get in touch with your true inner self and nature. Nurture and listen well to your resolve of your situation. Speaking up for your needs and forgiveness of others are self-important right now. Uh, others and self are important right now. It is time, it may even be a time of triumph if you work on breaking free of past condemnations and past negative patterns. The challenges are inattention, self sabotage, and martyrdom. As a healer, the passion flower works with the heart on emotions to bring balance. It sort of is a bit like if you want your heart to be soft, you've sort of got to work on it. And this is sort of saying if you've created rigid edges that people can't get to, you're not getting to the heart. So you sort of need to let go, let go of some of these per and forgive yourself and forgive others for what they've done so that you can move on. You know, you, you move on from that position, All right? Because we want love. We want passion. And that's what this is about. This self-preservation and we're going to sit here and, and there's a commitment coming in here. And it's commitment to yourself and it's commitment to love earth people all right we've come to a really interesting spot great thank you for still being here if you like like hit like and subscribe that's excellent i'm gonna go into the greenwood reading where i'm gonna turn this down to the table so you can see the card building up in the pattern and um then we'll do the individual star signs at the end so uh, i'm gonna turn it down and let's see what comes from this so the greenwood starts with the present state and then we move on to like the spiritual mediator so the first two energies that are surrounding us this week what do we got for the earth peeps this week? What do we got for the earth people? What's the present state? For the rock stars and the earthlings. It's healing. All right, this is taking a time. This is taking the time to connect and ground yourself. Um, this is a seven, so seven of stones being the practical world, seven being of healing. So this is really making that connection between your your groundingness and, and bringing that in and doing a physical healing of yourself. So you might be finding that it's time to make take care of your diet, maybe exercise, maybe it's time for you to meditate and find that space when you're really busy to actually rest and connect and take that actual deep meaningful rest inside of here. Making a commitment to yourself. You've been through a darkness. Okay. What's this? So this is the present space. We're looking at the spiritual mediator. So it's the next energy that surrounds us. We've got the heron. So this is a water element woman. This is the love queen. This is the emotional queen. This is connecting ourselves. So while we're healing our spirit and healing our body, we might be here at healing our soul. All right, this could be somebody that is in your ether, but in, this is also you. This could be you that you're really investing in your emotional being and your love connection and really healing, letting go of some of that stuff that we've just been talking about, right? So that we can make a commitment to something better. The next card is the conscious will. It's what you consciously think about what's going on. Conscious will. What are we thinking? Oh, Ooh, this is the stoke. All right, page of wands. Wands being fire, fire, faith, spirit, passion. All right, page being child. So this is a childlike passion and spirit. It's like turning over rocks. It's looking for the spiritual little things. So you might 
feel in your conscious will that you know there's spiritual little things that are going your way and you're looking this way and you're looking that and you might be that you're getting inspiration it might be that you actually are receiving messages that you can hear you might be picking up feathers this is this is this little page she's running around picking up feathers and rocks and turning things over but on a real spiritual level so this could be a fire element child in your life it could be inspiring a child like this or it could be looking through childlike eyes at your spiritual world Okay, so the next card is the driving force. It's the source of our power. It's the source of our power. Okay, Earth Earnings. This is uh, about this is about fulfillment. So in the two, we're talking about decisions, decisions of faith, because we're still in ones. In this three, we're taking that in. We're trying to balance it out. We're trying to heal ourselves here with these healing snakes, with the balance inside of here. All right, so this is bringing the decisions, and those decisions bringing you spiritual and, and passionate fulfillment is what the driving force inside of this is, actually healing yourself to find passionate fulfillment. And we've got the snakes again here in the home, taking that rest again, that healing energy again. Okay. The next card is the unconscious. We did the conscious will. We've got an unconscious empathy. What are we unconsciously think about? What's going on, Earth peeps? What do we unconsciously think about going on? What's going on? What do we unconsciously think? What are we doing? Okay. Which one? Which one? I'm going to take that one because it's the one that's looking at me. The ancestor is involved in this, all right? So you're on a path with the ancestor because I can see that there. But this would go back to faith again, the spark of life. This is a kapow beginning, kapow, kapow, right? This is inside of you. You can feel something burning. You can feel a light's being lit. You can feel you're carrying a torch, all right? This is your passion. This is your spirit. This is your drive. This is your lust. This is to succeed on a real spirit passionate spiritual level looking for fulfillment you got an idea or you've got a, a sparkler that's been set off in your heart this is exactly what this is kapow the spark of life a spirit a spiritual new beginning a spiritual new beginning a spirit new spirited path excellent what are the what are the things we need to work on what's our challenge in this uh, what's our challenge oh come out come out wherever you are oh so we're talking about a spark of life. But here we're talking about the ace of arrows being the breath of air. All right, so this is about communicating yourself. This is about communicating yourself, your heart loud. All right, so you've got this idea. It's time to spread the word. That's what it is. Maybe you're having trouble marketing yourself. Maybe you've got this great idea and you're having trouble telling everybody about it. Maybe you've got this great new love, but you're having trouble sharing the bliss. This is about how you talk from your heart and have your breath of fresh air. Breathe in new fresh air. You're healing. You're looking for your heart. You're looking for fulfillment. All right? You've been looking on a passionate quest in here. And this is about the challenge. The What we need to work on is how we express ourselves, how we express and really communicate in this new beginning as a new communication level. Right? I mean, not you, new old ideas that we were talking about. Like really shedding that skin and, and really moving through that to, to leave, lose that rigidness, to be able to talk about our ideas. All right, so the next card is the, oh, I need to move up just a bit. Oh, really, table? We need to move just a little bit, just so I can make enough room for everybody? Perfect, okay. Okay, so this is your challenge. This is the what we need to work on. So what do we gotta work with? We need a healing element, right? Healing element for the earth peeps. Two out. I'm going to take that one and that one. So, the healing element is the green man. All right, Earth peeps, this is a really earthy card, although it will come across as an Aries energy because it's really an emperor. But this green man, this green man loves, uh, is a real strong, like, like strong, empowered, really taking a hold of his passion. He is, the, is really a king and, he, and he's um, not, He's humble to the to the green wood, but he and, and he's a friend to the animals. But he's really there for the animals. He's not. This is the power. He's empowered by his spirit. He's empowered by passion. And this guy's got a heart and, and really is empowered in the physical world and really bringing something strong, a strong, loving, healing energy into your world. This has got a masculine, nice, earthy vibe. So this could be somebody coming into your life, and this could be you really being empowered by your spirit and taking things on. There's some sort of healing element inside of your healing element. This is strong earthy you feel a connection when you start talking your truth and and start being able to communicate because that's where our, our work on and our work with is 
It's as strong and it's earthy and it's healing. All right, what is the general outcome for the earth people this week? Joy! Three of cups. This is about being happy. In the, in the three of wands, we're talking about finding fulfillment, like spiritual happiness. This, we're talking about finding emotional happiness. This is about jumping for joy. These are, you know, you've got your two cups of attraction and one more with joy. There's going to be joy brought into your life through these circumstances. Let go of some of the old. Let go of this underworld. Let go of the past. That's part of what is moving. And that's part of your passion is to be able to let go and not have jaded and not make that ruin your future by holding on to your past because you've got joy in these outcomes, all right? In your home, in your love, you've got completion. You're coming out of a darkness. We're coming through this healing in our emotional heart, really speaking our truth. Earth blings, rock stars, right. So that's our overall, that's what we've got. The next three cards, I'm gonna do the individuals. So I'm gonna start with Taurus. Okay, Taurus, let's do this. Like, what have we got, three cards for Taurus? We have the three cards for us. What's the energy in the air for the week for Taurus? One. All right, let's see what else. Energy in the cards this week for Taurus. Oh, three. Okay. What do we got? Oh, so this is so empowered. All right. So when we got all these ideas, or we got these arrows, you know, these ideas and these this breath of fresh air, this arrow, it's potential. This is the potential energy. And this is a chariot in another deck, but this archer knows their skills. They know what they're doing. They they know when to breathe. They've got their companions. They're not alone in all of this. And it's skills. And this is about your potential energy and really driving into what the potential energy and, and honing into how you can actually apply that into your real world, Taurus. Oh, because we have the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is our euphoric king, is our loving king. All right, so if his heart isn't hardened and cold, this guy is warm and generous and euphoric and loving and can express that. All right, that's our match to this queen, to this queen of, 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 of cups, the queen of hearts. All right, we've got our king of cups and our king of hearts. And you've we've got the, the energy of the queen around you and here's the king. All right, so this is driving and this is a material, like potential energy, strong potential energy on the physical plane. It may be that you're leveling up to be this, this euphoric, stable, strong, loving energy. Third card. There's a transition. All right, so... To make this work, you have to let go of the past. You have to let go of the emotions that you are on, not in. All right, what you leave behind. A transition of the mind being arrows is when we leave one spot in our mind and we go, we already, we're gone. We're no longer thinking in that spot. So to achieve these goals, to achieve your joy, to express yourself, you need to go through this let go period. You need to let go of these like because you're aiming at something that's euphoric and you've got the skills and you've got the drive, this really is adding in this transition that you really need to think about what that is in your mind and, and really move across your emotions to let go of them. All right, With the new moon, with the new promise, you move across and, and you can change your life just there. All right? So changing your mind is what that transition is about. Really letting go of things. Okay, really letting go, Taurus. Okay. Thank you, Taurus. The next three cards up for, uh, ooh, uh, for Virgo. All right, Virgo. I'm going to take the top one, but I'm not going to take the other two. So we got the horse. So this is our strong, empowered king. He is very grounded. He has a material wealth. He is good in his career. He is able to express himself. We see this again, this express ourselves. Here we are. Our breath of life in our ace, we see this repeated. Uh, this is sort of a Gemini energy, Gemini energy. And seeing your challenges, how to express yourself. As this is a strong, stable, you know, belief in your career, belief in your skills, really empowering yourself. And maybe this is a person in your life, or this is something that you are attaining yourself. Okay. Earthy, earthy king. Strong, earthy, stable king that has achieved things in a slow and steady way that has made the structure of things. All right, two more for Virgo. One there, okay, that one. The shaman. Ah, so this is a time of manifestation. So these are both like Gemini energy. So this is the magician. So this is really taking your spiritual, where this is applying it to the practical world. This is really taking in your spiritual and really working on your healing through your spiritual world, really implying that through your green man and working out how you can manifest. This is a very strong manifestation of money. 
This is a very strong manifestation of something into the physical world, and this is really taking control of that. That is what this is. This is strong manifestation, strong spiritual energy, strong healing energy from the shaman with his support, with this very strong, stable, earthy king energy, which is able to express themselves in the physical plane. So this is both spiritual and physical, just there in those two cards. It's a very healthy balance. Okay, so... Ooh. So we're leveling up sort of just there. That's good. All right, one more for Virgo. What have we got? The world tree. So I learned the world tree is really about taking your path and walking your path. It's really about congruence. And as we... Uh, we travel far away from ourselves, we then travel back on ourselves to rediscover ourselves as the seasons change as we head to ourselves in our tree. All right, so this is about discovering yourself and rediscovering what you believe. You may have actually been through some of this shamanic work before and it's time to double back on it and relearn and relearn the rituals and go back to something but this is relearning ourselves over and over and over again and you're in a really strong stable position to deal with this seasons of change as we relearn ourselves on our path to our tree this is a very strong earthy um healing set of cards to get together Virgo so I really hope that somebody resonates with that out there um, hit like and subscribe and it's great to see you Virgo and I will catch you next week excellent all right so the next three cards are for uh, Capricorn what do we got three cards for our happy cappies what do we got what do we got for our Capricorn this week what have I got for Capricorn this week give me something good that'd be great please because right, we've got joy. What's going to bring the joy for Capricorn? How do we deal with this uh, breath of life? All right, how do we deal with this communication? How do we communicate our joy? Oh, it's over there. Oh. oh, the bear. So we've got this nice earthy queen. This is sensual. It's loving. It goes with this loving queen. You might feel if you are the earth queen that is looking at this, that you've got an amount of stability inside of here. This is strong, sensual, being in control of your finances, being in control of household and really taking and protecting everything that is yours on an earthy level. Really loving, earthy, connected woman. This this woman is this. And that goes with our heart. So we're feeling our heart and healing our heart. And you're going to feel maybe if this is a, you are an earth element woman, you're going to feel really connected to yourself and comfortable in your skin. Okay, two more for Capricorn. Two more for Capricorn. Ooh. Endurance. So, endurance. This is about, you know, it's about the senses. It's of the five. And this guy is just sort of waiting for the storm to pass. There's this something going on. There's a lot of lightning energy going out. There's a lot of change energy going on outside of that cave. But he's very, very comfortable where he is. Got a fire, quite happy, can sit there and wait out the storm. And so this is a really comfortable, earthy spot. There might be a lot of stuff going on around you, but you are in a real comfortable spot to protect yourself and weather the storm and just sort of enjoy the senses of as it passes past you. All right, so it may be a circumstance that's been enduring, enduring or it may be that you've got a, a, a circumstance that is calling for endurance, but we've got a commitment here and a completion. So it may be that, that your endurance has paid off. All right, one more for Capricorn. Ooh, temperance, balance. All right, so when we were talking about these two snakes, I was talking about these two snakes in fulfillment. This is exactly what we're talking about. This is taking the time to nurture yourself, like empty your, uh, you know, em em empty and fill your vessel, like re restructure your waters, really take in this energy and heal. And you've been, this is a, the, a re, this really reconstitutes and reaffirms this healing energy of the stones, either of the seven of stones here, and this fulfillment of spirit. Because together inside of this energy here, we're doing both of those things. We're healing our body. We're taking the time to fulfill and, and heal our spirit. This is a very healing spot, and it's a long endurance. So this is going to stay with you in this healing spot. You've been going through this healing, and it's really talking about it. You've got some joy coming your way, Capricorn. So I hope that somebody enjoyed that. I enjoyed by bringing them to you a hit like and subscribe would be fantastic and i will catch you next week capricorn thank you very much